The challenge of the Yukon. On King! On your husky! The wonder dog King, swiftest and strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the new Northwest country where the greed for wealth and power led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog King met that challenge and just ruled triumphant. <laughs> Sergeant Preston had returned from a long patrol that had taken him far north. He stretched his legs luxuriously toward the glowing logs in Pat Kearney's fireplace and patted the head of his big husky lead dog king beside him. Well, that was a fine dinner, Pat. You no idea how good it is to get back to civilization again. <laughs> sure, and I'd hardly call this civilization, Sergeant. Oh. A one-room cabin in the woods. Well, civilized compared to what... I've been through for the last few months. Nothing but snowfields, Eskimo, and blizzards. It seems such a waste of your time. Go all them miles and come back empty-handed without the men you went after. Well, as long as we know they aren't alive to rob or murder anyone again, job's finished. Well, tell me about it, Sergeant. The last time I saw you, you and that young Mountie, uh, what was his name? Uh, Kenny, Corporal Kenny. You were on your way north after two men. We were after Joe Garth and Steve Billy. The men who were wanted for murder, both here in the Yukon and in Alaska. Uh, they were bad ones, too. I prayed you'd come back alive, but I didn't hold out too much hope. It took us a long time to find them, Pat. By the time we did, it was too late. Then you mean you didn't see them at all? No, but we heard about them. We knew they'd robbed the general store at Grant's Post, headed north. They were getting up into mighty desolate country. Yes, it was desolate, but they were afraid to go anywhere else. You see, both the American police and the Northwest Mounted were looking for them. There was a tribe of Eskimos living at the base of a mountain near the Yukon River. Old Umlik was the head of the tribe. He told me the story afterwards. Umlik knew some English. I knew a bit of Eskimos, so I finally pieced the story together. It seems that Joe and Steve, after robbing the store, marched on up north. They had a big dog team and lots of supplies. On the trail, they met an Eskimo girl. Must you huskies! Must! Hey, Steve, look, an Eskimo woman. <laughs> Maybe there's a village near here. Ho! Ho there! Yeah, she looks scared of us. Hey there, you! Don't run away, we won't hurt you. Come here! She's afraid of you, Steve. I guess they ain't used to white men. Now get one of them red bandana handkerchiefs off the sled, you. Yeah, sure. Hey, come here! What's your name? Here's the bandana. Uh, hey, look. That's for you. Present, see? Yeah, she's curious. Yeah, now she's coming. That's a girl. Yeah, take it. It's the She can't speak English. It's you. Look what's hanging around her neck. Yeah, they're nuggets. Gold nuggets. Uh, don't go away, girl. You speak white man talk? Hey, don't talk so loud. You're scaring her. Hey, hey, don't run away. Come back here. Yeah, it's no use. She's running. Where do you suppose she got those nuggets? Why, they were as big as my thumbnail, every one. Let's catch her and take them away from her. That don't be a fool, Joe. There must be more where those came from. Huh? And we're going to find out where that is. There must be an Eskimo village near here. They probably don't even know that gold is valuable. She was wearing that string of nuggets like a mess of glass beads. We won't let these Eskimos know it's valuable, believe it. Steve, we can find out where to get nuggets like that. We'll make a fortune. Yeah, there she goes. Up over that small hill. Come on. We're following her. Smush! Smush, you husky! Joe and Steve finally saw the Eskimo village. They were too far south to live in igloos, but their huts were just rude shelters made of skins. As Joe and Steve stopped their dog team, most of the villagers came out to stare at them. The two men approached them slowly. Yeah, the girl got here and told them about us. 
<laughs> Look at him staring. Probably half of them never saw a white man before. You got that stuff in Sled? The present? Yeah. You think this is safe? Sure. And there's the leader, the old one. Hello! We friends! Hold your arm up. Like the way I'm doing, Joe. Yeah, sure. Look. We all have gold nuggets around it. It's unfortunate, quiet. Here comes the leader. Oh, no. Come and pull off. He's making a funny sign with his hand. That's sign language. I think he means welcome. We friends of Eskimo. You let us stay here? No, speak good. You lose? You go far? He thinks we're lost. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we lost. Maybe <laughs> camp here. I'll make signs. The only language he seems to know besides his own. <laughs> you look like a windmill. Me sure. No more too early. Yeah, you know what I mean. Look, no he wants us to follow. I'll get the team. Looks as if he's putting out the welcome sign. I'll be with you in a minute. The Eskimos, as you know, are very happy, carefree people. This tribe welcomed Steve and Joe into their village and treated them well. The white men's sled was piled high with supplies, supplies that they'd stolen from the trading post. Steve and Joe were careful at first and pretended no interest in the nuggets that the Eskimos wore strung around their necks. They traded with them, getting skins, food, and seal oil for their land. And then Steve decided to sound them out about the nuggets. It was one day when Creela, Oom's daughter, in Georgia. Let's go. Here comes the head man's daughter. Yeah, we ain't got time to talk to her. I thought we were going to follow that hunting party. They aren't ready to go yet. Maybe we can get some information out of this girl. She knows a few words of English. Yeah, give her some of that rock candy. They like that. Hello, Creela. Hello. You, uh, want some of this candy? Oh. I'll tell you what. I'll give you the whole bag of it for them beads. Yeah, she doesn't understand you. These, Creela. You give these, we give candy. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Got a chance. Uh, Creela, where you get beads? These things. You find them? Yeah. No, I. No, I. That tells us a lot. Eh, we'll never find out. There's probably some kind of superstition about them. They're good luck or something. We want any of them. We're going to have to take them right off their necks. Yeah. Maybe you're right. Right after that, the things began to happen to them, this little tribe. An Eskimo woman was found murdered. Her husband blamed another Eskimo and killed him. There were fights over the knives and hatches that the white men had traded for furs. Peace and happiness left the village. Wise old Umlik suspected the cause of the trouble, but he didn't know why the white men were staying there until one day they came to him. He was alone. We bring things to trade you, Umlik. Son, go hunt. No got furs. Oh, we don't want furs. We'll give you these knives and these cans of food if you tell us something. Or tell you? Just tell us where you get those beads. These, uh, things on a string around your neck. Where do you find them? That's all, Umlik. Where you find them? Just tell us where you find them. Then Umlik knew his suspicions were correct. These men had murdered the wife of Omak. A good luck charm had been taken. These were the men who had waylaid and robbed his people and taken the yellow stones that were like pieces of sunlight. And then he knew what to do. He beckoned to them to follow him. You come, Steve. He's going to show us where to find him. Maybe we should ask him in the beginning. We couldn't find it. Just late. Getting way back in the mountains. It's awful foggy. Missed a stick out there in the middle of the lake. Hey, that ice is clear. 
Looks as if the snow melted on it. You go cross lake. Find Yellowstone there. In river that comes down from mountain to lake. You going with us, Umlik? Me go back. We don't need him now, Steve. Come on. Let's walk across now. I can't wait. Steve and Joe started across the ice, and Umlik stood on the bank and watched. Soon the figures of the men were lost in the mist, but Umlik stood and waited. Then he heard the sound he was waiting for. Happiness come back, my people. The wise old leader had gotten rid of the menace to his tribe. He knew the lake was fed by a warm spring, and in winter the ice was thin. It was almost spring when Corporal Kenny and I finally got up in that territory. We found the Eskimo tribe just the way Steve and Joe had found them, by meeting the daughter of Umlik, except that our meeting was more dramatic. We were mushing along the bank of the river, which was still frozen, but treacherous. One king! On your huskies! Fight! Perfect desolate up here. We haven't seen a living soul for days. Look out on the ice, Corporal. You spoke a minute too soon. There's an Eskimo girl out there on the river. You're right. Shouldn't be out there, though. She'll have to go through. She's fucking through. Oh, king! Oh, your huskies! Bring that rope, Corporal. Come on, king! Hurry, fella! I'll be there in a minute. Get her, king! After her, boy! Hang on to the dog. He'll hold you up till we bring a rope. Here's the rope. Be careful of the ice. King's holding her up. Take hold of the rope. Help right. me, Bill. She's got it. I'll help you pull her in. Oh, good boy, King. We took Keela back to her father. I must say we weren't any too welcome until he found out that we'd saved his daughter's life. I explained who we were if we were looking for two white men. He told me the story then, simply and frankly. As he finished, he pointed to the big nuggets that hung around his daughter's daughter's neck. neck. They were worth hundreds of dollars. White men want sunshine stones. That's why they kill and rob. But only, you ought to know, that's gold. With so much gold, you can have everything the white man has. If you take all that gold to the town of the white man, he could give you much for it. No. No want what white man has. My people happy. Them have fish, plenty game. Sunshine stones bring luck. Me not tell where to find. But all that gold, it's a fortune. I wonder. I think Umlik's right, Corporal. As people are happy and contented. There's peace back here in the hills. There isn't much more that gold can buy. I think we'll start back home. And so we left them. Only could have done what justice would have done, Pat, as far as Joe and Steve were concerned. And you mean to say, Sergeant, you walked off and left all them nuggets sitting there just to be draped around the neck of a lot of Eskimos? Yes, Pat, I did. After all, it was Umlik's land. And wouldn't he tell you where he got them? No, I didn't ask him. But he wouldn't have told me anyway. Sergeant, just where did you say this place was? <laughs> I didn't say, Pat. As a matter of fact, we've forgotten, haven't we, King? These copyrighted dramas originate in the studios of WXYZ Detroit, and all characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. They are sent to you each week at this same time. Larry McCann speaking. This is the Michigan Radio Network.